Hey guys, what's up? My name is Esteban Cerrone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a contractor, developer, real estate investor. Today, we're gonna to be talking about, can you become a millionaire being a general contractor? The short answer is yes. Let me explain. My company went from $500,000 in revenue to $5 million in revenue. We do about 10 to 15% margins on most of our jobs and upwards of 50% margins on some other jobs. We netted about a million dollars our first year of that 5 million. So right there made us millionaires. We then took that money and put it into assets like rentals, like Airbnbs and created equity because we got the construction cheaper. We were able to do the whole you know, burst strategy and created equity there. So we're equity millionaires on the investing side through contracting and through getting those prices cheaper uh, for the construction. And we also have made over a million dollars of net profit in the construction services. If you specialize, you could even make more money. HVAC guys are making a killing. You'll see Grant Cardone talking about this, targeted ads. If you have an HVAC company, you wanna call Grant Cardone because he'll not only buy it from you, he might even partner with you and help you scale it so that you become a multi, multi-millionaire. This is also true in the electrical field, in the plumbing field, and the general contracting field in general. For example, we are doing 108 units out in Newark, Ohio. The contractor is making about $850,000 from us. That right there is one project. It's gonna take them about a year and they do two or three of those at a time. So you do the math. Can you become a millionaire as a contractor? Absolutely. So now that you know that you can become a millionaire doing construction, you might be asking yourself, how do I do that? Well, you gotta start small. Rome wasn't built overnight and neither is a construction company. We didn't go from 500,000 to 5 million in a day. It took us 10-ish months to get there. How did we do it? Step one, network, network, network. We went out, I met a bunch of real estate investors that had a ton of work, built those relationships and got to work. Number two, perform. Get that stuff done correctly or come back until it's done correctly. The biggest reason that I was able to climb the ranks in the contracting world is because even though we aren't perfect, because no one is, we come back until the job is done. We don't run away with people's money and we quality control as much as we can. If an AC that I installed goes out a year later, I come back and fix it. So when people hire me, they know that they have a warranty, which gives, makes them give me more jobs. The next thing we did was incorporate systems and processes that were ever changing and that we're still working on today. But at least we have a, a simple system that helps us track our accounting, that helps us track our material ordering, that helps us track our scope of work, and it helps us manage our project managers on each site. So this allows organization and more workflow versus being stuck on these small things. At first, I was doing everything myself from invoicing to project managing to material delivering. And I just had a capacity. We're human beings. We only have 24 hours in a day. So once you start delegating and putting those systems in, in place, you can do more work, even if you make a little bit less money because you're, you're paying other people to do your job. Once you start scaling that and multiplying, it ends up being more money. Even though each job will leave a little bit less money, you can do more jobs. We've tried a lot of different systems. The ones that are working for us the most right now are Trello and Slack. We also still revert back to WhatsApp because it's just so easy to use but just use any system, whether it's Google Sheets for accounting, whether it's WhatsApp for communication, take as many pictures of before, during, and after as you can, so you can learn from your mistakes. You also wanna create a lessons learned list. Literally go to Google Docs, and every time you learn a lesson, you start bullet pointing those lessons. So at the next project, you avoid that same mistake. You're gonna make mistakes over and over and over again on different projects, but try not to make the same mistake twice and that's why that lessons learned list is one of the most important systems that we've implemented. Next, you're going to want to self audit. Figure out if the jobs that you are doing are worth it. At one point, I was doing 60 jobs at a time. And although that sounds awesome, we were making very little margins because we weren't working with the right people. So in bulk, yeah, there was a lot of money, but it wasn't quite worth it for the amount of work that we're doing. So we had to do some self-reflecting and figuring out which clients we wanted to keep and which ones we needed to let go of. Once we finally got that together, we started working with the right people. We started making more money and actually started doing less work because we had not even half those jobs, but they were bigger profit margins. 
So you're gonna wanna find that sweet spot, whatever that means for you. It might be 60 jobs, it might be two jobs. Just figure out how you could be the most effective and efficient with the amount of jobs that your team can truly handle. Last but not least, customer service. It's okay to mess up. Again, we are human beings. We are going to make a lot of mistakes. You're depending on a lot of different people who are also going to make mistakes. You just got to be responsible and forward thinking and coming clean to your clients. Let them know why there's delays. Let them know where the quality issues are and what you're going to do to fix them. Also reassure them that anything that is wrong and not to their liking, you will fix for free as long as it was in the scope. Change orders are gonna happen. You can make a little bit more money there. However, if you say you're gonna do something, make sure that you follow through and then that person is gonna go tell their friends and you're gonna start getting an influx of calls because you do the right thing. So you could scale this company, you could do all these things, but if you're not doing the right thing with your work, with your word, it's not gonna work out for you. So just make sure that when you identify those clients that you wanna work with, you're doing right by them and you're having integrity within your company. That's one of the biggest values we hold. If something's wrong after we're done with it, we come back for free, absolutely for free if it's something we did. So do that, get testimonials from those people, put it out on social media, put it out on other platforms to then attract more clients, to have that validation that you're doing the right thing and the business is just gonna come on its own. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, all those good things. We'd really appreciate it. Share with someone that you think can get value out of this. If you found value or think you know someone that's gonna get value, comment down below, hit me up. I'm an open book. I'm here to be a resource for you guys. I'm looking forward to talking to you on the next one.